A long duration power outage might be the most disruptive event that could happen in modern times. These events can be caused by extreme weather, solar flares, and terrorism. How would you survive if you didn't have power for days, weeks, or even months? Stick around with us and learn how to be prepared. By the end of this special, we want you to be ready for it and living fearlessly Fairfax. My name is Alan Sheriff, and I'm helping the city of Fairfax to provide you with the information you need to prepare for a power outage. So let's first think about what a power outage is and what could even cause one. A power outage is a loss of electrical power to a network of people. A power outage is likely to occur without warning. The amount of physical damage to its infrastructure can also influence how long it can last. This can range from weeks to even months. It can cover multiple states or regions and affect tens of millions of people. Now, there are plenty of reasons why a cyber attack itself could occur, such as foreign distraction and retaliation, and that means the US power grid isn't immune either. The 2003 Northeast blackout left 50 million people without power for four days and caused economic losses between $4 billion and $10 billion. We can't take these scenarios lightly. Now, I bet you're wondering how your personal life could be affected. Well, your daily routine could consist of the following. Waking up to your alarm clock, taking a shower, preparing breakfast, commuting to work, sending messages, and even charging your own devices. But because all of these activities are dependent on a power source, you'll hardly be able to do any of them if you're hit by a power outage. Usually these events occur at the most inconvenient times. Not fully convinced? What about your water systems? What about your home that generates electricity, heat, and gas? And if the power is out, gas stations wouldn't even be able to provide gasoline. Radios wouldn't work, cell services can go completely dead, ATMs can shut down, and hospitals and healthcare facilities could be disrupted. So now that we've looked at the consequences, let's discuss what you can do to prepare for a power outage. First, you should put together an emergency plan for your entire family so that they know what to do, who to contact, and where to go. You'll need to know what to do when the power goes out, so don't hesitate to keep track of all the steps by creating a checklist. Next, you can gather and refresh your supplies, and for starters, you can include at least one gallon of water per person per day for at least three days, and you should really aim for a week or more. You should also include enough food for each person per day for at least three to seven days, and don't forget to keep your kit items in rotation. And if you have any additional power sources, make sure they're fully charged as well. Keep gas within your own car tank on hand just in case. Now, how would you be able to tell if a power outage was limited to only you? Well, to start, you can check to see if your neighbors have been affected. You can also check your own main fuses or circuit breakers to see if they've been blown or tripped. Remember, replacing a fuse or resetting a circuit breaker may restore your electricity. You can also call your electric supplier for updates. Once the power to your home returns, you want to make sure you've already unplugged all of your appliances to limit the damage from volt surges. Now let's say that an electrical unit in your area has been seriously damaged and won't be able to deliver power to you for a long while. Well, if you use a standby generator, make sure it's been installed and wired properly and keep a fresh supply of fuel on hand. You wanna check your basement periodically to make sure it isn't flooded. And in the case that it is, don't enter it. Make sure you ration your supplies correctly and try to limit your phone conversations to text messages to save power and get better service. Now, the summer heat is great, but getting stuck in a building on a hot day with no AC is a nightmare. So here are some things you can do to keep yourself calm, cool, and collected if a power outage occurs during your summer. Do your best to keep all freezers and fridges closed and as often as possible to keep your food fresh. Frozen food is generally safe to eat if there are still ice crystals on it. You can also wrap blankets around the appliances to provide extra insulation. AC units should be turned off during power outages. Don't turn them back on for several minutes after the power has been restored. Remember, the summer always comes to an end, but that doesn't mean power outages will. When winter comes around, make sure you have a working carbon monoxide detector and never run a generator indoors. If the health of a family member is a concern, alert your electric provider. Now here are some additional tips. Create emergency contact cards for every member of your family. You can get food safety tips from USDA.gov. Turn off electrical equipment you were using when the power went out. So what are we to do after the power outage is over? Well, when in doubt, throw it out. That means any food that's been exposed to a temperature of 40 degrees or higher, 
or has an unusual odor, color, or texture. You should also call your doctor or pharmacist for instructions regarding your medication. See these maps provided by NVEC and Dominion Energy? Guess what? You can also use them to see the outages in your area. Now here are some important phone numbers to have for emergencies. If you haven't already, now's the time to sign up for Fairfax City Alerts. You can get important updates of your own choosing. Get more online preparedness from the City of Fairfax and PlanetReady.com. Thanks for getting prepared with us. As a resident of the City of Fairfax, you can do your part by getting prepared so that together we can be a resilient community in the face of disasters of all kinds.